Oklahoma had lost only one game all year in which it had scored more than 80 points. And Kansas, even playing in its own backyard, knew that it would have to slow down the Sooners in the second half, especially after Manning picked up his third personal foul in the early seconds of the half. Larry Brown didn't dare take Manning out of the game, didn't dare risk giving Oklahoma the opportunity to explode. Manning stayed in, and Manning produced. He rebounded fiercely. He outscored everyone. He did everything but lead the cheer. <laughs> Oklahoma clearly had the more balanced attack. Every man in the Sooners' starting lineup scored in double figures. Stacy King wound up with 17. Still, Kansas held the Sooners to four points in the first four minutes after intermission. And when Manning hit his jump shot, the Jayhawks held a four-point lead, 58-54. Then, in the next four minutes, the momentum shifted. Oklahoma outscored Kansas 11-2. When Mookie Blaylock broke free for a layup, Oklahoma coach Billy Tubbs could almost taste victory. The Sooners had never won an NCAA title, had reached the Final Four only twice, the last time in 1947. But when Stacy King's jump shot lifted Oklahoma into a five-point lead with 12 minutes to play, the Sooners could hardly contain their excitement. Tubbs tried to calm his team down, but even he didn't suspect that King would not score another point, that the Sooners would manage only 14 points the rest of the game, only one point more than Manning scored during that time all by himself. The last quarter of the game was played at a pace Kansas dictated, a deliberate pace that conserved the Jayhawks' ebbing energy and disrupted the Sooners' rhythm. Oklahoma went almost five minutes without a field goal and took only three shots in that time. Manning, who never did pick up a fourth personal foul, who led all scorers with 31 points, clearly was in command. Newton, who wound up six for six, took only one shot in the second half. Kevin Pritchard, who wound up six for seven, made the shot that, with five and a half minutes to play, put Kansas in front for good, starting a streak of six straight Kansas points. Manning contributed mightily at both ends of the court. He had two block shots, as well as five steals and 18 rebounds. Oklahoma's fans could see their dream of a national championship fading away for the second time in three months. Kansas, of course, had a rich basketball tradition, sprinkled with names such as Naismith, Fog Allen, Rupp, Chamberlain, and Dean Smith. But for this one night, at least, Manning outshone them all. He gave Kansas a four-point lead. Then, with a little more than three minutes to go, Chris Piper, who, like Manning, went to Lawrence High School, gave Kansas a six-point lead, matching its biggest of the game. Now it was the KU fans who sensed victory. Oklahoma was struggling. Seeger went cold, missing four of five three-point attempts in the second half. But after five minutes without a Sooner field goal, Ricky Grace drove in for a layup that cut Kansas' lead to three points with less than a minute to play. Then Manning made one of his rare laps. He missed the front end of a one-in-one -one foul situation. Oklahoma got the ball, and Mookie Blaylock, who had missed his two previous field goal attempts, connected from the left side. And suddenly, it was a one-point game with 40 seconds to go. Anyone's game. Kansas ran the clock down until Blaylock fouled Scooter Barry with 16 seconds to go. Barry made the first shot, but missed the second. Manning, a hero once more, grabbed for the rebound and immediately drew a foul. If Manning could make both shots, the game would almost be out of reach. He made the first, and Kansas led by three. The crowd knew it was witnessing an historic end to a brilliant career. Manning made the second. Kansas led by four, with only 14 seconds to play. Oklahoma had to score twice to get even or to win. The Jayhawks let Ricky Grace go all the way unmolested. His basket cut the margin to two points. Still seven seconds to go. If only the Jayhawks could get the ball safely inbounds, they would almost certainly win. They were smart. 
They got the ball to man. He was fouled. Made both shots. Put the game beyond reach with only five seconds to play. Just enough time for one last desperate shot. A shot that meant nothing even if it went in. It didn't. And the Kansas Jayhawks, the local heroes, were the NCAA basketball champions. The perfect climax to Danny Manning's four years of college stardom. They had finished no better than third in the Big Eight, but now they were number one in the nation. Kansas was king in Kansas City. Kansas championship, most improbable, the longest of long shots, and the championship just continued the soap opera. Within a week, Larry Brown calling a press conference. It was assumed he was going on to UCLA to be their head coach for the Bruins. He said no, he would stay in Kansas. But then shortly thereafter, he took the offer to go to San Antonio. The NBA become the highest paid head coach in the NBA. And several months after that, Kansas on probation, unable to defend the title it had won with such verve and such emotion. We hope you've enjoyed our look back at the 1988 Final Four. I'm Bob Lee.